a very valuable ecosystem. They actually have a function, which is that they um, they filter the sediment coming off the land and they trap it. They also catch and hold sort of excess nutrients so that they don't get released in the water. So in that sense, they're, pre they're actually a safeguard of the water bodies. The tendency has been through the colonial period of New Zealand's history has been to um, put dump, dump things in them or to drain them and turn them into productive land because they're often very fertile places. So, but for me, the thing that's actually the best is that they're also beautiful. Like the light in the, in the wetlands is really special because it's reflected off the waters and off the reeds and off the grasses and, and they're often very quiet places so they're actually really unique little spots. When I came to Waiheke I was, I was really taken by just how environmentally aware people on this island are. Um, some of the most aware and active in the country and you know if we can't sort of look after wetlands on Waiheke you know what what's the situation with the rest of the country and it's it's really not that much better <laughs> to be honest um, some of you might be interested in numbers does anybody want to make a guess as to what percentage of wetlands are left in New Zealand 10%, 10%. yeah it's, it's around about 10 for the freshwater wetlands in New Zealand so we drained and and destroyed 90 percent and just couple of hundred years that Europeans have been here and there may have been a bit of modification even before then. We compare it with something like California, about the same size as New Zealand, much much bigger population. Somebody want to make a guess what their percentage of wetlands, freshwater wetlands left in California? About 50 percent. Wow. So little old New Zealand we've done a cracking job of uh, getting rid of our wetlands and we have a lot of rain but we still <laughs> have managed to get rid of 90 percent of our wetlands. And of the ones that are left, only about half are in legal protection. Now just in comparison, native forests, we've got rid of about 70%, we've still got about 30% of our native forests and scrub areas left, and about 70% um, of that is legally protected. Wetlands, we're, only, we're down to our last 10%, only half of those are in any kind of legal protection. So they're in a bit of a perilous state. So it sounds all a bit gloomy and dire, but there are good news sides of it as well. One of the good news things about wetlands is they are qu relatively easy to, or quick, to recreate. Now that doesn't mean we should ever destroy a wetland and just go and make one somewhere else, because we're nowhere near as good at nature as building back the diversity and all the processes and systems that go into creating a wetland. But it does mean we've got to a situation now, we're down to our last 10%, we can look at doing restoration. Firstly we want people to get, get into wetlands in your head, we want you to care about wetlands, we also want to get people physically into wetlands because we think if you go into a place and you explore it and you learn about it you're going to care about it a bit more. If you go onto the website the National Wetland Trust website, you'll find a directory of wetlands that you can physically and legally go and visit in Auckland. So some of them are very short little walks, some of them have got some really wonderful wild aspects and long walks, places like Whatapu, um, Kaitoki on Great Barrier. There's some magnificent wetlands in Auckland and I do encourage you to go and check, check them out. This project's about restoring the wetlands this winter at the Rangihawa Anatangi Sports Area. It's being managed by the Waiheke Resources Trust and a partnership with the Waiheke Local Board. Starting at the sea, so you go through a sort of saltwater wetland through to the, all the various stages, right through to freshwater wetlands. And so there's what they call ecotones, there's a whole lot of different sort of transitory, transitory stages of wetlands. So we have two community planting days, our one today and we picked a beautiful day. Um, and then there's one on the 2nd of August. And then we have three other planting days where we have school groups coming 
over and we also have a group of students from uh, Unitech who will be helping us with this project uh, with the monitoring. Looking at the area before the plants have gone in, um, collecting data about the plants, how many and the varieties and also how many volunteers and how many hours and then looking at it at regular intervals and what's the change that we've seen how many of the plants actually rooted and have grown in some areas maybe you know the, the plant may not survive and just collecting all that data and learning from what we're doing. The young people I think is probably more of an educational value and, and the connecting to the places that they live and their community and for older people you know I think they do it again you know wanting to connect wanting to feel that they're contributing to the community. So we will be back here next winter. We'll be continuing on the work that we're starting this, this month. So it'll be an ongoing project.